Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Oblon Polka Dots and my name is Kerr. And on this channel, we talk about makeup, skincare, and beauty. So if that's something you're into, you've come to the right place. Today, I am working my way backwards. Believe it or not, it is nighttime. It is the end of my day. I've already done everything I needed to do, but I still needed to film a video. So here we are. I am working with my new mic and hopefully you guys can hear me a lot more clearly than you have been. Um, please let me know in the comments if it sounds better, if the quality is okay. So today we are going to be using the Lorac Pro... It's the end of the evening, you guys. We're going to be using the Lorac Pro Palette in the Fairy Tale Forest iteration. This comes, I think, in three or four different versions. So this is the Fairy Tale Forest. I've wanted this palette for a really long time. Um, I just couldn't bring myself to pull the trigger because I don't know what's going on out there. It's loud though. Um, <laughs> I couldn't bring myself to pull the trigger because I just was like, do I really need another neutral palette? And the answer is yes, I do. I've had this on my wish list for probably the past year and a half, I think. I'm trying to get you guys to be able to see these colors. So I think it's really being washed out by the ring light. That's the other thing. I need to work on my lighting, but we're going to do one thing at a time. We got a mic. We'll work with that. So anyways, it's a neutral palette, but I think the reason they call it Fairy Tale Forest is because of these two shimmers right here. This one and this one. If you cover those up and you only look at the rest of the palette, to me, it just looks like a regular neutral palette. So... My assumption is that they want you to work with those greens. Also, don't forget I have a family and they are loud. So you're probably going to hear them. In any event, let's do what we normally do and prime the eye. We have our Essence Prime Like a Boss eyeshadow base. And we're going to throw this on our lid. I love this stuff. And this particular tube is right down to the nubbins. There's only a little bit left. So and get out of it what we can. I have a backup that's ready to go. There we go. This primer keeps my eyeshadow from creasing and moving all day. And I work very long hours. But when I get home, my makeup is in place. So love it. We're going to let that dry a little bit. And while we're waiting, we're going to go in with this Milani Under Eye Brightener. It's the Conceal and Perfect in Number 4 Nectar. I really love this product. It's fantastic. I use it a lot. It really does cover the gray that's underneath my eyes as well as my melasma. So, cannot complain. Well, I can. And I do sometimes. I complain about the packaging because it's messy. But... Honestly, if they changed the packaging so it wasn't as messy, I think it'd be a perfect product. Especially since the price point is really accessible. We're just going to do this. I know we're not going anywhere, but it's good for practice. Okay. And then we're going to take a sponge. And we're just going to press this in. Okay, that's pressed in. So let's get back to the eyes. We're going to grab a fluffy brush, flat brush, and a little small brush to begin with. And let's start off with our fluffy brush. So we're looking for a transition color. And I found one already. We're going to use this one right here. We're going to pop that in the crease. I really love the rock shadows. They are so beautiful. They're high quality. They're just gorgeous. I've been using them for years and they are definitely a go-to for me. Um, I know there's a lot of other brands out there and obviously I own several, but 
The Rock is just a classic. They did it right the first time. And they, as far as I'm concerned, they are the kings of mats. They have never made a mat that I have not been able to work with. I was just working that into the crease. Okay. Just bringing that up, making it warm. There we go. Okay, I think that's good. And then let's see, why don't we grab, I'm so predictable, you guys, so predictable. Why don't we grab the color that's just below it, this one right here, and we're going to start working that in to deepen up our crease a little bit. Same brush. We're just making little circles. We're just working this into circles. We're not going anywhere but the outer V. So this little section right here that looks like a V shape. Plus, we're not going all the way to the outer corner. We're stopping just short because I promise you that shadow will migrate there on its own without me pushing it further. Otherwise, it ends up too far out. Let's do the other side. I hope you can see what I mean when I say I'm stopping just short of the end of my eye right there. Because again, the shadow will migrate out there on its own by the time I finish this look. It does not need my help. And I believe I learned that trick from Wayne Goss. If you guys don't follow him here on YouTube, you really should if you're looking for makeup application techniques. He's extraordinary. Such a talent. He's from across the pond in the United Kingdom. Okay. So we've deepened up that outer corner pretty well. And now, let's see. Let's start working into these green shades. I think I'm going to dip my toe into this one right here in the upper corner. And we're going to see what that looks like. I'm going to take my flat brush for this one. And we'll see. I don't want to go too far in though because I'm not sure of how deep this shade is. So we're just going to start with like a stripe <laughs> right here, right on top of that brown that we just laid down, that crease color. We're just blending that in. Okay, so this is definitely an olive. It's like an olive green. And I'm glad I didn't go too far in because it's definitely deeper than I thought it would be when I looked at it in the pan. So I guess we'll just stick with the stripe right here. We're not going to go any further in. Okay, see how we're going so far? Okay, so we're going to take the same brush and let's start getting a little bit plate. Well, I don't know. Actually, let's hold on for a second, you guys. Let's grab this mat right here because it's a little bit warmer and we can try pulling that one in. Same brush. And let's just see 
right next to that stripe we just made what that's going to look like. Okay. Yeah, this is more of what I would want to do. This is warmer. I'm not going to pull it all the way to the inner corner, but I'm going to probably pull it just short like that. We'll do the same thing on this side. I just didn't want that deep color to migrate across my eye because I do my looks in a gradient. So the deepest part is on the outside with the lightest being on the inside. Plus we still need to fiddle around with that green. All right. Okay, we're getting there. I can see why they call it a fairy tale forest palette. So now let's change gears a little bit and we're gonna go in with, let's see. I don't know how that sparkly green is going to perform. So what I'm gonna do is put a little insurance down. I'm gonna grab this NYX glitter primer. I'm gonna put a little of this down where I'm gonna lay down that glitter. We need just a little flat synthetic brush. This will work. So a very small amount of this stuff goes a long ways. Plus, whenever you do put it down, just know that it gets tacky quickly and it will pick up whatever shadow you laid down underneath it. So if you don't want that to happen, you have to work fast. There we go. Right about there. And you can see where it is. It's glossy on my lid. So we're going to let that dry a little bit. Set this down. I love this stuff. If you guys don't have a glitter primer that you use or you haven't found one that is working very well for you, I recommend that NYX one. That's the best one I've tried. Um, where is the... Here we go. Okay, so we still have our same brush going. And what we're going to do is we're just going to get bold. Let's get bold. We're going to go in with this green right here. So I'm going to lay that down and we're going to see what happens. And all I'm doing is just patting it on the lid. You can't blend in a color on top of that primer because it doesn't, it's not designed for that. It's designed for you to press something on top of it so that it sticks. And I do feel a little fallout, not a lot, but a little bit. So this is what we're working with so far. And I'm really digging into this color too, by the way. So I'm glad that I decided to put down that primer because I'm not really sure it would have showed up otherwise. Let's work on this side. And if you noticed, I didn't go all the way to the inner tear duct because I want to lay down another sparkly green. And actually, I might lay down another sparkly green on top of this one. But let's do this first. Okay. What do you think so far? I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm not impressed. I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to grab the other sparkly green that's right next to the one we just worked with. This one right here. And we're going to see what that one does. Because I feel right now like this look is kind of basic. I'm going to see what happens if I can just slap that on top of the other green. It's definitely a lot bluer, but I'm not sure it's having the effect I thought it would. That's okay. That's the whole point of playing in makeup, right? Try and see if we can get a little more impact by gliding this on top of the shadow that's underneath of it. Okay. 
Okay, that's a little bit better. A little more impactful. I think I get so spoiled too with some of the indie brands because their shimmers and all that are really just, they're popping. Um, we're going to use the same brush, but we're going to take it and we're going to flip it over. So instead of this side, we're going to use this side. And I'm going to go on with this gold right here. And I'm hoping that gives me the impact that I'm looking for. Yeah, that's what I was looking for right there. That. I wanted the drama. I wanted the prestige. I wanted the red carpet. I wanted the fairy tale forest. I wanted the prince, the frog, the cottage. I wanted the whole nine. And that is what this color is bringing. This is definitely a fairy tale shadow. I'm talking birds are singing, mice are dancing, little ladies are helping me to get dressed for the ball, the whole nine. Red apples, pricking the finger, the whole nine. That's what I wanted. That's the drama I was looking for. The only place I want drama in my life is in my makeup. <laughs> ah, that's much better. Okay, I'm relieved. All right, much better. Okay, so now let's finish the rest of the face. We're gonna take the palette and we're gonna just set it down for a second because I still might go underneath. And let's see about this fallout. Not much, very, very little. That's good. I'm not seeing a lot, you guys. We're good. We're covered. So let's uh, throw on some, it's summertime. And even though it's summertime, it's nighttime and I'm going nowhere, I'm still going to do my makeup the way I normally would, just so you can see. I grabbed this primer because it's a primer I haven't used yet. It's in my stash of 10 million primers I have not used. And I just wanted to give it a try. I will say though, when I went to open the box, why? Why? Because the ring light is washing it out. So when I went to open the bottle, the that's you know got the shrink wrap around it for the plastic, it was all sticky. So I had to take some time to clean it off. I think the epoxy or glue or something melted because of where I had it sitting. It's fine now, but this is the Revlon Photo Ready Prime Plus Perfecting and Smoothing Makeup and Skincare Primer, complex infused with vitamin B5 and hyaluronic acid. I grabbed this from. Amazon and I think the reason I picked it up if I recall is because it's supposed to be a dupe for another primer I think it's supposed to be a dupe for the um, hourglass I believe don't quote me though but I'm pretty sure that's the case so we're just going to put this in the places where I normally get oily up there. It has a very uh, industrial smell to it. It's not the most pleasant smelling product, but it's not super offensive either. Hmm. It's very, um, yeah, it's kind of, I don't know, it's probably got no fragrance in it. And so it just smells like whatever the chemicals are that it's made of. Okay. <laughs> Let's go in with the L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum in the shade 7 to 8 Tan Deep. I bought three bottles of this on a whim. I mentioned this in another video as well. And I'm glad that I did because I really like this stuff a lot. And uh, it, I apparently like it a lot because I've already gone through like at least a quarter of that bottle and I feel like I just started using it not long ago but it is a serum so I don't know if I'm just using a ton of product for coverage and I'm not using it correctly or if that's just kind of how it's designed because it's so thin that they would anticipate just people use a lot of it 
I don't know, but I do like it. It's comfortable. And when you put it on, it's very cool. It has a cooling effect. And I think that's why I've really been enjoying it this summer. I've never had a product like that before. And it's very pleasant. It's a pleasant experience. It's working well with this primer. I'm not really feeling any resistance. And I'm not seeing any patchiness. You know how sometimes you'll use a primer that's like super duper strong? And then you go to lay down your product and it's like patchy? It made me think of the, what's that one that they used to make from Becca? The one that was like the industrial strength primer. I tried to use that so many times when I was younger, when I had really oily skin, and I couldn't really use it because it was so matte. I was like, wow. <laughs> okay, so let's go in with the Lancome Tainty Doll Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. I have mine in the shade 470, and we're just going to go underneath the eyes with this. My little bottle's almost empty, you guys. Love this stuff. It's a good thing I have a backup. Actually, is it a good thing I have a backup? The problem is, when I find a product I love, I will buy a backup of it. And then, when I run out, I use the backup. Meanwhile, I'm still buying other products, and I haven't even given those a chance, because I keep using the one that I love. And I might love those, too, if I gave them the opportunity. Okay. We're going to take our same little sponge here and we're just going to blend that in. Just pressing it down gently. There we go. Looking good. Okay. Yeah, that primer is definitely doing me right. I feel good. It's a nice one. It's not drying. It's not heavy. I'm not seeing patchiness. Yeah. Glad I opened it. This is a good primer. Okay, so now we are going to go in with a setting powder. I was going to, I was going to actually, you know, I will. I'm going to use my um, Chanel Le Beige Creme Belle Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. This is in 398 Soleil Tan. We're just going to use a little bit of bronzer. I really like this bronzer a lot. It has a nice chocolatey feel to it, and it's not super duper red. I find that a lot of times with deeper bronzers, they really go ham on the red. And I'm like, I don't necessarily want it to be red. I mean, red's good for the bronzing, but, you know, sometimes it's like overboard. You know what I mean? Where it's almost like they put down the red first and then added a little bit of the pigment after. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm still not used to working with this yet, as you can see. So I either do too much or I do too little. So I'm going to have to end up fixing that. We'll fix it in a minute. I also like the way this stuff smells. It smells almost like a fragrance. It might bother some people. So if you do, if you are considering purchasing this, just know it's got, um, it's got a fragrance to it. I like it though. It's pleasant. Okay. So now let's powder our face and then we'll start cleaning up 
whatever extra crazy I threw down. We'll get it to look right in a minute. <laughs> Thank goodness it's nighttime and I have nowhere to go. So I can just take my time to really fiddle around with this. I really love this Ruby Kisses setting powder. It's the HD Set and Forget. This one. I just realized I'm wearing a microphone and I'm wondering if it's making a ton of racket because of where I have it placed. <laughs> oh no. Ah, sorry guys. Um, I'm not going to worry about it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. If it's really bad, I promise I'll just refilm. Because I don't want you to have to live through that. It's not your fault that I'm technically inept. There we go. You can't even tell what I did with that bronzer, can you? That's the power of powder, you guys. That powder came in and was like, don't even trip. I got you. That's the real prince in this fairy tale. Okay, so making a mess, making a mess. I have, oh, I need a blush. Hold on, let's do a blush. What's a fairy tale without blush, right? What do we have here? Mm, how about, should we do this one or this one? This one or this one? Let's go with this one. We are going to use the NYX Sweet Cheeks Matte Blush in Bang Bang. I really like this blush. I probably put it back for a reason, probably because I kept using it. <laughs> and because it's a fairy tale, we're gonna try going for an ethereal look. So I'm starting really high on the cheekbone. And I'm just gonna work my way forward. Right up underneath the eye. right into that temple. It's bringing that down, but not too far. There we go. We're stopping right here where that cheekbone is. Can you see that? Right there. We're not going below it. <laughs> I hope that's looking ethereal. Okay. Putting all my brushes in the container back there because it's time to wash them. How about, let's see, what do we have next? I'm looking for, what did I do with that pencil? We're gonna use this one. Yeah, this one from Urban Decay. This is called Stash and it's definitely a green and gold pencil. Love it, this stuff is gorgeous. And we're just going right over the lash line. And then we're coming right down into that water line. Try not to poke my eye out. There we go. That green. It is that green. I love green. It's my favorite color. So being able to do a look with green is top shelf for me. I have the MAC pencil here in Spiked. It's for your brows. My brows are tattooed. However, I will use this pencil to fill in any sparse areas. But this evening, I'm just using it to 
straighten out my eyebrows a little bit before I spray my face with setting powder. It's my favorite. And then for... Do we need to do anything about the powder? I think it's good. I think we're good. Normally I'll use this Black Radiant Soft Focus in Golden Almond just to tone it down, but I think it looks okay. So we're going to skip that this time. And for, set this over here, for my setting spray, I'm going, oops, oh my gosh, making a mess. For my setting spray, I'm going to go in with this one from Milani. It is the Make It Last Cherry Scented Setting Spray. I don't have a lot left in this bottle. I'm really flying through this stuff. It definitely smells like cherries all day long. Definitely smells like cherries. So if you are sensitive to scent or you don't like the smell of cherries, that is not the setting spray for you. Next we have, <laughs> I try to warn you guys about fragrance and things because I know a lot of people are really sensitive to fragrance in products. So I try to at least point it out. Should we do a little color on the lower lash line? How about a little bit? Let's just do a little. Let's grab a brush. We need a, this one. No, we need just a little one. Doesn't need to be big. How about this one? We we'll use this one right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and mirror the look on the lower lash line to the top, right? So we're just going in with some of those colors that we used to make our look on the upper lash line. Okay. Then let's go in with this one. And then let's do a little bit of this one. And how about some of that one? And then let's get our shiny ones. If you notice, I didn't change brushes at all. I've been using the same brush for every single color I just supplied. There we go. Yeah, boy. Fun. <laughs> okay. I like this palette. I knew I would. They do get dirty right away, so... If you're one of those people where you really like your palettes to look nice and neat and organized all the time and free of fingerprints and not like smudged or messy or no fallout, then, you know, you might want to reconsider. But I like this palette. I love the Rocks formula. I think they do a really good job. Let's finish the eyes. Since we're doing a fairy tale look, we could do some lashes. I have some super fluffy ones that I got from Amazon. They are fluffy. But I feel like, you know, if you're going to be a princess, your lashes, they should be fluffy, right? Isn't that how that works? <laughs> I mean, I'm guessing. I know, this is a long video. Thanks for those, to those of you who are um, still hanging in there with me. We're just having fun. We're playing in makeup. 
that's what we're doing. So I have these super fluffy lashes right here. They are fluffy. And why not? Let's just do it. It'll be fun. Let me put this brush away. We don't need this anymore. And I have some tweezers. We're going to use that to lift these lashes from the plastic container. Okay. Oof. And then we're going to take this and we're going to go like this a little bit. And the reason we're doing that is we're trying to get a good bend in the lash before applying it to the eye so that it will adhere to the shape of my eye. And here's my glue. I'm using the Active Duo Black Adhesive for strip lashes. I heard a lot of people didn't like this glue, but I've had no problems with it. So I don't know if maybe there was a bad batch out there. I'm not sure, but I've had no problems, so I keep using it. My favorite one is the one from KISS, but Duo makes fantastic glues too. So we're popping that glue onto the band like that. I'm going to turn my fan on and hopefully it's not really loud so we can make this glue a little bit drier. Not a lot, just a little bit. It can still be wet so I can move it around on my lid, but I want it to have a slightly tacky feel to it. That's probably good. Okay, let's see if we can do lashes on camera. That would be nice. I don't typically gravitate towards lashes with thicker bands, but lately I've been kind of liking them. Okay. So that's on. You see what I mean by like this is a very dramatic lash. I almost should have picked one that was a little bit less dramatic because the lashes are definitely covering up this look. But if you try this look, let me know if you did lashes and what lashes you picked. Because maybe I'll try this again, but with some lashes that are a little more demure. Let's grab the other one. What, whenever you do lashes, you guys, you always have the one lash that's cooperative, it does what it's supposed to, and then you get to the other lash and you're like, why won't you get in the car seat? Like, you're just over here acting a fool, trying to, <laughs> try to like, push your way out, just get your sippy cup and get in the car. Like, it's not difficult. Every, I don't know. Does everybody have that experience too with their lashes? Let me know in the comments. Just one's well-behaved and what a delight to have this lash in school. We just love her. She's so studious and attentive in class and helpful to the other students. And then you have the other lash that's just a straight hellion where the principal's always calling and they're like, I'm going to need you to come down here to the school today. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's that lash again. That kind of thing. All right, we're going to pop this in front of the fan. <laughs> Talking about lashes like kids. Good grief. Yeah, I definitely would have gone with a lash that is not as um, eye-catching. But this is fine. <laughs> okay, so that's probably tacky enough. And we're just going to set this down. Start in the middle. Come on. Oh, see, I knew it. You know why? Because I was talking to all that trash. 
There's always the one, you guys. Every time. That's fine. Let's try it again. You come down there to the school and you're just like, Hi. I'm the right lashes mother. Oh, yeah, honey. They're in the principal's office. Thanks. And then you get down there. And that little lash is sitting there all quietly like they didn't just try to burn the school down. And the principal's like, you know, we really try to work with you on this. And we're just hoping that things will improve. And you're just looking at that little lash like, just you wait till we get home. Just you wait. You out here cutting up, back in the fool. I know, it's silly. And of course, that's the one that ends up growing up to be like, I don't know, a lawyer or a doctor or something. And it's just like, ha ha, remember how you were when you were little? And then they're all amazing and responsible and pillars of society. We have some glue right here. We're gonna leave it there for a minute and let it dry and then we'll fix that in a second. I'm going in with the Essence Get Big Lashes Volume Boost Mascara. We're just going to add a little bit of this to the look. And then let me turn this fan off. There we go. then we're going to go on with the top. I'm not actually like pulling the mascara so much as I'm just rolling along the lash line. Just rolling it up because I don't want to mess up my lashes that I just put on. I'm just trying to blend in my natural lashes. Okay, so let's go through and try and clean some of this up. I have this stuff, which I really love. It's from NYX, and it is the two-in-one lash liner adhesive. So what I do is, if I can see that there's going to be a problem, I will take this adhesive and I'll lay that down where I know the problem is going to be. And then I can just blend it in. You know how you can look and you can kind of see those little sparse areas where it's like, huh, I bet this lash is going to lift up later on today. There we go. And then let's also fix that glue that's gone rogue right here. I don't recommend doing this unless you truly have a steady hand because you don't want to hurt yourself with a pair of tweezers, especially not your eyes. Not worth it. It's better just to go back over it with some eyeshadow and just cover it up a little bit. There we go. Okay. Is there anything else we... Oh, we don't have a lip. <laughs> I'm like, is there anything else we need? Yeah, actually, a lip. Let's grab something on the neutral side. How about we go like this? I have Max Cork and Chestnut here. Why don't we use Chestnut for a liner and then we'll pop a gloss in the lips. Because this princess is from the 90s.
here. And here. Nineties princess. We take our liner and we overline. I have this one. It's got sparkles and glitter in it. It's so pretty. This one, I think, is the one that's called chocolate. I believe hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. The writing is very small. And I love these Fenty glosses. They feel so good on the lips and they smell really good. Mm. Let's clean that up. Hmm. And here, is that it? Mm. Okay, <laughs> I don't know if I look like a princess that's out of like the traditional fairy tale forest, but this is the one that I've cobbled together today. And I really like this palette. If you want something that has neutrals and also is like slightly grungy then this probably is a good palette for you as well so for example if you really like um, melt cosmetics you might like this one a lot either way this is the look that we put together today and i hope that you like it i think it's fun i think it's <laughs> very fairy tale like in my mind um and yeah i like it <laughs> thank you so much for spending time with me today you guys I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.